Welcome to the 10th lecture on advanced algorithms. I'm Philip Kinderman and today I will tell you something about optimal binary search trees and in particular about display trees. The big question that we want to look at is the question how good is a binary search tree? And since you already know a few things about binary search trees, let's look at what we already know. So this is a binary search tree. Every vertex has at most two children. And if we want to search for something, for example, for the number three, then we start in the root and then I check the three is larger than the two, so I go to the right, it's smaller than 13, so I go to the left and so on until I reach my number. Now, if I take any binary search tree and I want to do a query, the worst case is that I take linear time. So the worst case query time of any binary search tree is theta of n. But as you know, there are self-balancing binary search trees, for example, the red-black tree. And if I use that one and now I look for the three, then the longest path I can have to the number only has logarithmic length. So for these red-black trees, for example, or AVL trees or whatever you like, the worst case query time is theta of log n. And that is usually what we use to analyze how good something is. We look at the worst case. And you probably also all know that this is optimal, so it is not possible to get a binary search tree where we get a better query time for any input. But what if we know the input before? Well, if I know before I built the tree that I will look for a 3, then it's quite easy. I just put the 3 at the root, and now my query takes only constant time. So if I look for something that I don't know of, then I can do it in logarithmic time. I cannot do better. If I know what it is, then I can do it in constant time. But usually you don't use a tree to only look for a single number, but you will look for several numbers. So we'll have a sequence of queries. For example, first you might want to look for the 2, then for the 13, and then for the 5. And then what you can do is you can do several queries or you can keep walking. So you can start with the 12, you walk to the 2. Now your pointer is here and you walk to the 13. So you go up and down again. And now your pointer is here, you want to go to the 5. You go up and down again. And now each of these queries takes logarithmic time. So the time we take in total, if we have such a balanced tree, is number of queries times log n. And it might also happen that we don't have distinct numbers, but we want to query uh, some numbers several times. So here we have logarithmic time per query. And the question is, is this also optimal? Well, again, if we know the sequence of queries, then we can build a tree that is better suited for this. So if we know we want to query only 2, 13, 2, 13, and so on, we just put them at the top, and now we can do each of them in constant time. But if we have a long sequence of queries, and we want to look at many different numbers, or we want to look at each of them, but different number of times, then it gets more complicated to create such a tree. And then also it gets more complicated to measure how good a tree is. And that depends entirely on the model, how we want to measure the optimality of a tree. 